Hi everyone, this is Andrew. Today I'm talking about Attracted to the Bad Boy. Background After analysing my friendships over the years, I am attracted to the bad boy. Now this is completely non-sexual, I'm not gay or anything, this is just about me finding people in my life who I would consider to be bad boys. So I'm the polar opposite. I'm straight up. I'm athletic. Math, science nerd. Honest, law-abiding, good student, etc. It's almost as if I'm missing something in my life, an outlet to be naughty as such. My life is ordinarily quite boring, so it's probably understandable that I would seek that outlet. For whatever reason, they are attracted to me too. Maybe they need someone good in their life, someone to guide them, to help them. Maybe it's a chance for them to corrupt something pure. I'm not entirely sure. There's that old adage, opposites attract. I looked for a definition and I found, we are drawn to others out of needs and desires that are unfulfilled in our lives. Case 1. Craig Okay, so he was a fellow high school student who I met in grade 10, chess club, around 1994. He was a pastor's son, who outwardly seemed nice, but had a very dark side. Now I had a few pastor's son friends, and most of them seemed to have this sort of bad side to them. I think it's a natural reaction for their children, for pastor's children, to have this sort of rebellious side. We became friends, and he introduced me to some forbidden things. He had a bootlegged copy of a UFC match. So UFC is like mixed martial arts. It's very popular now, but back then it was a very controversial thing. I knew I was watching something bad. I normally ate quite healthily, so I ate lettuce tomato cheese sandwiches. He introduced me to chips and tomato sauce ones on white bread. So something I was completely not used to, but I enjoyed. He smoked herbs, which I only smoked passively, so the herbs were probably marijuana, I don't know, but he referred to them as herbs. Afterwards, he'd breathe in deodorant through a handkerchief to mask the smell. Obviously, that can't be good for you either, right? Breathing deodorant straight into your lungs. Um, yeah, so I sat in, in his room while he smoked all this stuff. He often offered me the uh, cigarettes or whatever, but I refused. But obviously I was still in the room, wasn't I? So I was taking in the effects of the drug. He lost his virginity to a girl four years his senior. Yeah, so I think she was 17 at the time. And what can I say? <laughs> I don't know what happened there. He had a rifle in his bedroom closet. Maybe a 22. I don't know. I'm not a gun guy. Uh, which he shot into the park, damaging a garbage bin. Extremely dangerous, obviously, shooting into a shooting randomly into a park. I remember he shot the bin. We went there later and found out that it went straight through it. The bullet could have gone anywhere, couldn't it? It could have hit somebody, could have killed somebody. But afterwards, we thought it was so exhilarating. Thinking back, I thought it was it's just absolutely ridiculous, isn't it? It's stupid. Case two, Joe. I've mentioned Joe before. He was an American I worked with in Japan uh, around 2002. He was a thrill seeker who was constantly bored with his life. He sought thrills to relieve the boredom. I was the suit wearing, well spoken, teetotaling good guy. I studied Japanese every day, and of course, we immediately became friends. He threw a bottle out of a 21st story apartment window, smashing into the roof of another building. Again, that could have killed somebody, couldn't it? It could have smashed down on somebody's head. He didn't know it was going to hit, the, hit another building. He just did it, because he was that sort of guy. While hiking, he saw a snake in a pond and decided to pick it up. He assured me it wasn't dangerous. <laughs> That's an actual photo of him doing that. Um, because I'm from Australia, and snakes here are generally dangerous, deadly. I wasn't going to touch it. Yeah, he was probably right. In Japan, there's probably very few venomous snakes, if any, and it probably wasn't dangerous. But again, I wasn't going to touch it. He liked free running, which he claimed was running down the side of a mountain through forest, rocks, etc. I think free running has come to mean something different now, but at the time, he used it in the sense of like an uncontrolled run. And soon after I took that picture of him holding the snake, he literally ran down the side of a mountain. About halfway down, he... Uh, he tripped up and started tumbling and came to a rest down the bottom. Now I thought he was severely injured, but then he started laughing and then I realised he was okay. 
One day he slept with a cheap Chinese prostitute, this is in Osaka, in her 50s and caught a STD. He needed an operation which was going to cost about 50,000 yen and he, needed, he asked me for the money which I refused to pay for. And after that we had a bit of a falling out. Over money. Ridiculous, eh? Um, I don't know. I'd, I wanted to help the guy but he wasted all his money buying alcohol and drugs and whatever else and I saved a lot of money and he did something stupid, caught a disease and needed an operation and I just didn't want to pay for it. Case 3. Craig the Second. Now this is a different Craig. Craig was my manager from a place I used to work part-time around 2007. I won't reveal the type of place because that will probably reveal his identity. It's kind of, yeah, I don't want to say it. He was a beer-swilling, drug-taking maniac. Again, I was the uni-studying, hard-working, diplomatic good guy. As expected, we became good friends. I don't know what's wrong with me, but this happens a lot. We'd play poker for cash every week or two. We became quite good and were able to fleece a few unknowing victims. We drank his homemade alcohol, yeah, so he had like a, he made his own beer and so on, and for whatever reason I drank it. We went to the city to celebrate his birthday one night and we ended up in some dive. There was only two of us in the bar and two bouncers out the front. I encouraged him to steal a bar mat, wearing it around his neck like a wrestler. We thought it was a good idea at the time. We thought it was funny. The bouncer didn't. The bouncer ended up tearing Craig's shirt, smashing him in the face and leaving him lying in his own blood on the concrete. I raced over to help, but the bouncer threatened me. I took a video of the last half of the assault. Um, Craig was arrested. He had to go to court. The video didn't show enough, not to prove that Craig wasn't responsible for this. The bar cameras were faulty, of course. They obviously deleted them. And Craig ended up getting a fine for public nuisance. And I've been racked with guilt ever since. It was almost entirely my, uh, my fault. I encouraged him to steal the mat. He got bashed up because of it. He could have died. I don't know what I was thinking. I didn't really, I don't think either of us thought it would go that far. I don't think the bouncer would have gone that far with it. With Maybe he would have grabbed him and pulled off the bar mat or whatever, but no, the 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 bouncer had a chip on his shoulder. He was out for blood that night. Uh, that bar has since closed down. Um, I think it closed down soon after, maybe a few months after that incident. Nobody was going there anyway, and the owner was a bit tired of paying his uh, staff, his security staff, when they were going around hurting people. And that's it. Why I'm attracted to the bad boy. I still don't know really why I am. But since then, I haven't really had many relationships with bad boys as such. Um, probably now that I have a family, I have uh, two young children, I don't want to go out to bars anymore, I don't want to go to clubs. Um, I have had a couple of uh, relationships with what I would term bad boys, but they're a bit more mature now and weren't the type that would go out and do stupid things. Anyway, thank you for listening. If you have any of your own stories about bad boys, please leave them for me in the comments below. And until next time, thank you.